So I want to talk about pregnancy and diabetes, okay? If you're pregnant and you're a diabetic, there's several things you need to know. In fact, if you're pregnant and you're a pre-diabetic or you're pregnant and you have insulin resistance, which is a lot more common, in fact, probably I would say 65% of women who are pregnant that are not diabetic usually have insulin resistance, this video is for you. First, let me just define insulin resistance. This is a condition where your body is not able to absorb insulin, which means that when insulin is triggered by carbohydrates, it doesn't seem to work that well. And then what happens is your body has to make more insulin than it needs, and that excess insulin creates a lot of problems. If you check the blood sugars, your blood sugars may be normal, okay, because of the excess amount of insulin that's being generated, keeping your blood sugars normal, but you have a big problem underneath the surface. You have high amounts of insulin. And this is the test that can be done to check that. It's called HOMA-IR. I would definitely get this test before you get pregnant because you want to know if you have insulin resistance because it creates a lot of problems. So if you're a diabetic or pre-diabetic or you have insulin resistance and you become pregnant, the insulin resistance part gets worse. Why? Because it's a survival mechanism. The fetus is going to demand more fuel, and so your body, is, as a protective mechanism, it's going to create insulin resistance on you. So it's going to be shunning to the baby. The problem is that if you have insulin resistance already going into this, things get worse and you may become a diabetic. And this is probably the reason why women get gestational diabetes during pregnancy. They already are going into this with insulin resistance. Now, if you're a diabetic and you're pregnant, the diabetes tends to get worse because of this fact right here. Now, the problem is the complications from you having blood sugar issues, whether it's insulin resistance, pre-diabetes or diabetes, there's complications for the baby. Uh, one is that they're more likely to become a diabetic, more likely to become a stillbirth. And just being a diabetic, you may find that you're having a hard time being fertile in the first place. Uh, the baby might have extended growth, birth defects, preeclampsia. That's a combination of three things, high blood pressure, protein in the urine, and swelling in your hands and feet. Eclampsia is basically when you get seizures and a lot of other problems, like you're in a coma, you can even die from that. So these are three things that uh, you need to be aware of right here, but that could be coming from the blood sugar issue. Now, the big problem of having insulin resistance, in addition to being a diabetic or being a pre-diabetic, is that your ability to absorb these nutrients is impaired, okay? You can't absorb nutrients. I'm talking about vitamin C, vitamin A, vitamin E, magnesium, potassium, manganese, zinc, chromium, selenium, folate, B1, biotin, and these nutrients are essential to prevent these complications. So you have a double-edged sword. The insulin resistance is creating the inability for these vitamins to go in your body. And these deficiencies now are creating more insulin resistance. This is why if you're thinking about getting pregnant or you're already pregnant and you have insulin resistance, you better be taking these vitamins or eating food high in these nutrients, vital, 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 to prevent these complications. In other words, the blood sugar issues, the insulin resistance, the diabetes severely depletes you of nutrients and you have complications. So if you're diabetic and you take these nutrients, these complications really diminish. All right, and the last question is, how do you know if you have insulin resistance? Well, you can get the test, HOMA-IR, or you can actually go by symptoms as well. Do you have belly fat? Do you have frequent urination at night? Do you find that when you eat, you're not satisfied after a meal? You need a little sweet after you eat, or you're tired after you eat uh, lunch, or you have low blood sugar symptoms. Let's say you get irritable and you cannot go very long without a meal before becoming lightheaded or highly irritable. I mean, think about how many women have these symptoms when they're pregnant. The best place to start is well before you become pregnant. But if you're already pregnant, I would recommend getting on the healthy version of the ketogenic diet. 
As far as intermittent fasting goes, definitely do that before you're pregnant, but not while you're pregnant, okay, or you're breastfeeding. You want to make sure that we don't deprive you of basically foods that have these nutrients in them. All right. Thanks for watching. Hey, before you leave, I just wanted to give you a little quick history on some of the books that I wrote. This was one of the first books. It's called Dr. Berg Body Shapes. It was my attempt at um, writing about body types. Uh, what was very interesting about this book is I actually did all the images myself. Uh, don't ask me why. Um, they look actually not quite as professional as some of the uh, images that I have in the new book. But anyway, this is my first attempt right here called Dr. Berg's Body Shape Diets. Uh, and then I wrote a book um, more extensive called The Seven Principles of Fat Burning. I don't even have a copy anymore, actually, um, because it's outdated. Uh, the next book, uh, I put about a thousand hours into this one right here called The New Body Type Guide. Major updates on the body types. Uh, I put a lot of energy into this. Uh, it has professional images, graphics, all sorts of things. Now, the problem with this book is it doesn't really describe what this is really about. Body types are only a small portion of what's in this book. And that's why I changed the name to The Healthy Keto Plan. Okay. If you happen to have this book, you don't really need this book because there's some only very, very minor updates. But if you don't have this, you need to get this one right here. Um, this book goes into every single detail that you would ever want to know about. It goes into the seven principles of fat burning. It goes into hormones, uh, the body types, the basic keto plan. It goes into intermittent fasting. I talk about the 10 fat burning triggers and blockers and fat burning strategies with a lot of details in every single chapter. I go into body issues that interfere with losing weight. Um, there's very few people that just have a weight problem. They have a lot of body issues, whether it's sleeping problems, uh, stress problems, inflammation, menopause. I cover that extensively in this book. Then I talk about how to get rid of stress and I show you a technique. Uh, then I get into exercising. And then I have a lot of really good recipes in this book as well. So uh, this is a good reference guide. Um, on my website, if you get this book, you get this one free. It's called Healthy Keto Intermittent Fasting. This is the shortcut, a uh, quick guide to this book. And uh, the reason I created this book is to have you within 45 minutes learn how to do keto, okay, in intermittent fasting, exactly what you need to do. Then you can fill in the blanks with this book right here. So right now I'm doing a special. If you get this book, you get this one totally free, or you can go to Amazon and get these individually. So I just want to clarify the difference between this book and this updated one right here. If you don't have this, you need to get this right here. That way you can get the exact correct information to do it healthily.